Let me read to you a passage from the seventh chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 31 to 37. It's the Gospel for Friday of the fifth week of ordinary time. St. Mark writes, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Epatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened and his speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. That's from Mark chapter 7, verse 31 to 37. It suggests thoughts on holiness. What do I mean? Well, in the passage immediately before this one that I've just read, in the Gospel of St. Mark, our Lord has been in the region of Tyre, in retreat from the throngs of people who were seeking him for healing from their afflictions. The purpose of retreats such as this was above all to provide greater instructions to the Twelve for their coming mission as the foundation stones of the church he would found. Now in our Gospel that I've just read from Mark chapter 7 verse 31 to 37, he returned from Tyre and our scene finds him again in a Gentile district, that of the Decapolis. Once again, some people brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they asked him to lay his hand on him. Let us notice this detail that they asked him to lay his hand on him. Our Lord then <clears throat> had what we might call a well-known ritual of placing his hand on the one he was about to heal. Busy as he was with such requests, he did not often just utter a word of healing and send a person off. There were exceptions to this. The Syrophoenician woman was one case. <clears throat> Our Lord cured her daughter with a mere word. It was the same with the centurion, but the centurion demurred at Our Lord coming personally to him. But otherwise, the indications we have show that our Lord commonly gave a very personal touch to his healings. In our case today, there is even more of this personal touch. We read, he took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Epatha, that is, be opened. Christ is showing the afflicted man that he is the object of very personal attention. He takes the trouble to show his deliberate involvement in the life of a suffering individual. Now, if we appeal to Christ, he will attend to us personally. At various points in the Gospel, we see Christ commanding the one he has healed not to spread abroad the healing he had been granted, though in this, too, there are exceptions. One exception to this was when, having healed the one possessed by the devils, called Legion, on another occasion, here in this Decapolis region, he told him to go and make known what God in his mercy had done for him. Nevertheless, we do see that time and again Christ commanded the cured person not to tell others about it. Why was this? It was because this healing ministry was not Christ's principal work and he didn't, did not want it to be taken as the primary benefit he was sent by his heavenly Father to bring to man. His work was something incomparably greater, and his miracles were signs that he had the power and the love to establish the kingdom he was announcing. Christ desired to concentrate, and he wished others to concentrate, on his principal mission, which was to announce, explain, and establish God's kingdom. 
that kingdom in which God would be ruler of the hearts of men and in which he would enable them to live the life preached by Christ would come above all through his death and resurrection. Personal holiness, the overcoming of sin, the transformation of the heart of man, all this was the mission he had come to fulfil. He had come to bring to each individual the immense heavenly blessing of God's kingdom which would be within the heart of man would be transformed by the power of God's grace, and God will be, would be all in all. As we read of Christ treating the man with the speech impediment in such a personal and individual way, and as we then read of his ordering him and his friends not to tell others about this physical healing, let us focus our lives on the true meaning of Christ's person, teaching and ministry. Let us pray for a knowledge of the person of Christ and for a true understanding of the plan of God for us. Let us not be sidetracked into looking on Christ in ways that miss the essential purpose of his coming. He has come, above all, to make saints of us, hidden saints immersed in the ordinary life and transforming that ordinary and humble life into something which, before God, has an, an eternal grandeur the grandeur of life in Christ.